Welcome. In this module, we'll take a case study for a very important voice over IP uh, or call manager component uh, based on the asterisk platform uh, for voice over IP calling. And this is the asterisk voice over IP security hardening guide uh, or the security hardening module. And this is the URL. Uh, we will use this uh, particular uh, source for the recommendations, and there are 10 to 12 recommendations provided by the author who has written this article on the web. And uh, I would just like to mention here that Asterisk is a free of cost open source um, voice over IP development platform for voice over IP, and, and the IP PBX can be set up for, for free in an, in an enterprise uh, to handle the call management function or the IP PBX function. However, uh, inherently, like all IT assets, the asterisk um, voice servers or voice over IP platform is also insecure, and it requires a lot of hardening. It needs to be placed behind the firewall. You need to put controls uh, in place. Otherwise, um, the voice over IP um, PBX or voice over IP server may be hacked uh, by hackers, and there are international mafia who are very good at detecting um, and attacking these voice over IP servers. And if you have trunk lines going to uh, the incumbent uh, telephone operator like PTCL here in Pakistan, then uh, you could be in for a shock because using the E1s or the, or the lines, um, uh, the, the outbound calling lines, uh, this, these type of systems, IPPBX, are hacked. And um, the international um, uh, mafia or the attackers are using this um, customer hacked IPPBX as an extension of their calling card platform, and you may wake up in the morning and find out that uh, thousands of calls have been made on your platform using your PSTN lines, with, uh, which, which are your P PTCL lines, and this is now a common phenomena even in, in, uh, in Pakistan and around in the region. So we have to be very careful uh, while deploying uh, the voice over IP call managers or the asterisk voice servers in particular because inherently, by default, they are insecure. So this is the eight-step methodology for security hardening. Uh, we go exactly the same way that we've been talking about in the entire course, starting from step number one, identify the asset, up to step number eight, implement and on the production and monitor. So uh, these are some rules. We, in this module, we have, we'll cover about half of them, about six of the rules. The first one, uh, which the author is suggesting, who's written this article, the URL was on the first page, you can have a look at the complete article. Physically secure your IP PBX and network hardware. Now, this is important because if you don't lock uh, the, uh, the server, then it's open. Um, a hacker or any person having malintent, uh, malicious intent, can just walk in, pick up your server, or can put in a USB, copy all your data, or can access the server uh, in an unauthorized manner. So the physical security is very important. You must make sure that the cabinet is locked, the room is locked, there's access control. Number two, never, never, never use the default passwords on any system. This is like the equivalent of having Cisco Cisco as login password on your router or switch. Uh, use strong passwords. This will stop most of the attacks as hackers use weak passwords to break in. And although it seems very simple, but you know, most commonly when the installations are done, the uh, installer is just pressing enter, 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 and they are uh, using the default configuration. So it's very important that you use strong passwords. Never use the same username and password on your extensions. Now we're talking about the phone extensions, and there may be dozens of phone extensions or thousands of phone extensions. And sometimes what's done is that if, the, if it's extension 1215, then uh, the password for that extension 1215 is also 1215. So the attackers really know what the pattern is, and um, they uh, can break in and uh, in the configuration by trying out some uh, brute force attacks and can figure out the password and that's how your system can get hacked. This is another very common issue, especially within the asterisk community. Using password 101 for extension 101 is asking for big trouble and we should not do that. Number four, place your PBX behind a firewall. This is critical. Uh, just like uh, PBX needs to be placed behind a firewall, all your critical assets need to be placed behind a firewall or then uh, you're placing uh, your asset out into the wild and we're asking for trouble. Use VPNs for remote access if you need to access your network or your voice or IP server 
and you're sitting at home or uh, you're traveling, use a VPN for remote access and limit to specific IP addresses on the firewall. Allow access on ports which are absolutely necessary. Uh, shut off all the other ports. Disable anonymous WAN requests like ICMP um, or ping or uh, access to your IPPBX remotely should try to um, limit the access to specific IP addresses, specific ports. Use the permit and deny lines in SIP.config. Uh, use the permit and deny lines uh, to only allow a small range of IP addresses. Access to extension slash user in your SIP.config file. This is true even if you decide to allow inbound calls from anywhere uh, by default. And it won't let those users reach any, unauthentic, uh, any authenticated elements. So that's very important. That was rule number five. And number six, keep inbound and outbound routing separate for asterisk. This is probably the biggest cause and source of tall fraud, which is the typical pattern how the hackers are attacking. By keeping your inbound call routing in a different context than your outbound routing, if an intruder does happen to make it into your system, he can't, back, he can't get back out again. So you should have different contexts, different instances for outbound calling and inbound calling. Extremely useful recommendations for asterisk voice or IP security. And I also like to mention there are several tools now available for scanning like um, uh, like uh, fail to ban and uh, other tools available. And if you just search that free um, or open source tools for scanning or uh, security assessment of, uh, of voice over IP servers, then you'll find that there are a lot of tools available for you, which you can use. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.